Hi, I'm Mitch Shoemaker and today is day 39 of my day 100 days of YouTube videos and focusing on my writing. So yay for day 39, <laughs> I think. Um, today I just really didn't want to write. I just really didn't want to do anything. And I just really get frustrated with myself because I keep doing this pattern, this cycle, and I know that it works if I just work through it, if I just do what I'm supposed to do, and um, and then I always feel better when I write. I always feel better when I write. I always get new understandings, new insights, new everything, um, and then I just get frustrated with myself because I don't want to do things, and I know that doesn't help me getting frustrated with myself. It just starts that negative cycle that I'm working so hard to stay out of. Um, and focus on positive things. And I mean, I did have a pretty good day. I just, I was really tired today. And, um, but I did get laundry done. I got dishes done. I made muffins today. I made yams today. Um, had some friends over, got to hang out, do stuff, you know. So I had, I had a good day today. It's just that then it came to the point where I was supposed to actually like work. And I'm like, I read my scriptures and meditational today. <laughs> I did all of that. I just got to the point where I was supposed to do work on my book. And again, I think there's just always something in this book working on recognizing God's hand in my life that I just, I don't want to see or I don't want to write about. I don't have to come to terms with something. I don't know what it is. But every time I do it, I feel like this weight is lifted and I feel lighter and I feel better. And I just... I'm like, I know all of those things, but I still just keep fighting and I wish I would stop. I really do. Um, I wish I would just let myself do it. And at one point I was so tired today, I decided I was going to stop fighting being tired and I was going to take a nap. And I tried to take a nap and I don't even think I slept for like an hour because I was like freaking out in my head that I'm like, I can't sleep because I have to do my YouTube video. I have to do my writing. I have to do this. I have to do that. And I was just like, ah, oh, very frustrated with myself. Um, because I just wanted to sleep because I was so tired. And then, of course, I refused to do everything and stayed up later anyway, which just doesn't make any sense to me why I do that. I don't make any sense to myself. But I did look at my book, um, and I don't really like the chapter that I have for this next title. Title for the next section. I don't like the title for the next section. Um, and I... I started reading it and the first part of the chapter didn't seem like it had anything to do with the title and then I kind of figured out where I was going with it and then I thought I knew where I was going with the chapter and then I have all this other information that kind of goes with it but now it's all out of order which I'm like great I'm halfway through the chapter and all this stuff would make way more sense at the beginning and the stuff at the beginning doesn't make any sense at all and <laughs> So I have no idea what I was thinking, and it just means that I have to do some more rewriting and rearranging and reorganizing of the chapter, and I can do that. I'm perfectly capable of doing that. I just, um, I'm just being lazy, so I'm like, I did make some changes, I did type up some stuff, and then I was just kind of reading to see where I was at, see what I did, and then I was like, okay. And then part of me was like, okay, I can just finish reading this and I can rearrange it and I can do whatever. And then the rest of me was like, no, I'm just really tired and I want to go to bed. And I just don't want to do anything today. <laughs> so that I don't want to do anything today is, is winning out. Um, but I think I just, I need to remember to be gentle with myself and to remember that I'm trying to do a lot of new things and make a lot of changes and... I have not been letting myself get a lot of sleep this week. I've stayed up way too late, including today. Um, and I've just been really tired and not getting enough sleep. And that's not good for me because my brain just doesn't function properly when I don't get enough sleep. And then I'm pushing myself. And um, I mean, it's good for me to push myself. It's good to know that I can do more than I give myself credit for. thought I forgot about that one. Darn it. Just comes right out. Um, but, but I also need to remember that I need to learn how to take better care of myself and better care of my body, which is something that I was writing when I did my scriptures and meditation I was writing today that I was like, I need to, um, not only just trust God to take care of tomorrow, to take care of my future, my finances and all of those things, but I need to learn to take care of this body that he's given me to be grateful for the body that I have and to figure out how to take care of it, to feed myself on a regular basis so I don't feel like I'm hungry. So I was talking to my friend today and she's like, well, how come you wake up? And I'm like, I don't know why I wake up. I always wake up when I'm tired. And then I realized I usually wake up and I'm like, I'm hungry. And I was like, I don't know why I'm hungry all the time. I was like, 
Oh yeah, because I don't eat. <laughs> I mean, I eat. I just, I eat like maybe two or three times a day and I don't always eat before I go to bed. And I think my body um, thinks that I'm starving it still, even though I'm not. I'm like, I'm feeding you. I fed you. Or maybe I'm just not feeding it the right kinds of foods or something. I don't know. But I'll wake up and I'll be hungry. And if I'll get up, I get something to eat, I can go back to bed and I can go back to sleep. So if I only get four hours of sleep, if I grab something to eat, I can go back to sleep. But my problem is I don't want to go through the trouble of getting up to get something to eat because then I think that I'm awake and that I'll do stuff for an hour or two and then I'll fall back asleep. And I'm trying to convince my body to just sleep the whole time, which it might do if I would eat before I go to bed. It might if I started exercising. It might if I have a regular schedule, which... I keep trying to get myself to do, and then I keep, um, and I'll do really good for a couple of days, but then, you know, stuff happens, life happens, and then it just doesn't work out for me, and I'm just like, oh, I have the ideal schedule in mind, I just can't seem to get myself to stick to it, to do it, um, because I get up too early, and I'm like, oh, I have extra time, I'm going to play my games, I'm going to do all this stuff, and I'm like, and I'm out of time and I'm supposed to go to work. So now I'm going to start working on my writing that I could have been doing all day long. Um, and today I just, I did, I slept in. I just didn't want to get out of bed. And then I had to do a bunch of cleaning and stuff because I had friends and people coming over for dinner, which was fun. It was nice. I actually enjoyed doing that. I haven't done that in a really long time. And it was great to have an excuse to clean my kitchen. Um, and it was great to, you know, be able to make some muffins and stuff and, I kind of wanted to make dinner rolls, but then I realized I didn't have all the ingredients that I needed to make the rolls that I wanted to make. And because I didn't get out of bed early enough, I didn't have time to make all the, to make them, even if I had the ingredients for them. So I did muffins instead, but um, it worked out really well. And I'm really grateful for that. And, um, and the people that came to dinner, they were just, you know, thrilled with whatever I had to offer them. And I'm like, yay, okay. Um, but anyway, I just, I waited all day to do my writing, which I did a little bit of, and now I know that I have to go back through and rearrange that chapter. And I have to find a better word to, a better title for that section, because I don't like the I can't be bad. That's not, I don't know how to describe what I'm saying. It's just, I, I do know, and I don't know, and I just, ah. Uh, I just get frustrated because it's like, it's just not right. You know, when you're like writing something, you're looking at it and it just, it doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right there. And I'm like, I understand the concept that I'm trying to portray, but I don't think the words that I'm using for the, the heading for that section is portraying the words that I'm, I'm looking for because I mean, I could do bad things. I've done a few bad things. I'm not a perfect person. I've made mistakes too, so I mean, that's not really a, a thing there, it's just, um, and I don't want to say that I hate being good or I hate being the good kid or whatever like that, but it's just, um, I think that chapter was just expressing a lot of frustration in my life where I could see um, other people that seemed to get um, rewarded or got attention for doing the wrong things. And I would do the right things. And I was told that I was the good kid and my mom didn't have to worry about me. And she'd have to spend time with me because I was the good kid. And I would understand that it was gonna be okay. And I was like, um, so I have to get in trouble to get attention. And then I don't really get in trouble because my mom wasn't really good with the whole punishment thing. And then she was just more like, just disappointed or would just flat out say, you know, if you'd come home and done what you were supposed to do, I wouldn't have even known you were off doing something you weren't supposed to do. And I was like, and hence the point that I was invisible at one point in my life, that as long as I got my stuff done at home, nobody even noticed that I was there and nobody cared. Um, but if my stuff wasn't done, then it's like, oh, but some days it didn't matter and other days it did. And in that case it did because um, I had to do laundry and since my mom didn't traverse the stairs and the laundry room was downstairs, um, her laundry wasn't done. And since she needed clothes and she didn't have any, of course, that fell on me. And I was like, and nobody else can do laundry and nobody else can go check. I mean, I'm not the only person that lives here. But um, yeah, and basically she didn't, 
she didn't care. She didn't even know that I left after that either, as long as I switched the laundry and she got her clothes. So, <laughs> but I, you know, I also had other situations where people would tell me like guys that I dated or exes or whatever, that, you know, they were doing me a favor by breaking up with me or that I didn't want to know things that it was better if I didn't know things or they weren't good enough for me because I was just too good or something. And I was like, how does that make sense? I'm too good. So you're breaking up with me. Like, I don't, I don't understand that concept or I can't participate in what you guys are doing because it's not appropriate, then why are you doing it? I don't, I don't understand that either. Um, but I feel like people have like, I guess left me out of things my whole life because of that. And so that's kind of, this chapter was trying to explain feeling left out because I was too good. Only I didn't feel like I was good enough, which doesn't even make sense. It was like this whole, um, oxymoron back and forth thing and um, I kind of had a little bit of an epiphany about that yesterday that I probably should write in my book as soon as I get to that end section um, but it was kind of the realization um, that instead of being left out which I felt like I was left out and not getting the attention and all of those things um, and recognizing that my my biological mom just wasn't available emotionally to give me that support and she was still trying to deal with her own stuff and she had all of my other siblings to deal with that um, apparently needed more than I did. I don't know. Um, I don't know how much more they actually got, but just, you know, um, but I do realize in my life that I've always looked to see what everyone else got and felt like I was not getting what I needed because I didn't get what everyone else got. Um, and I'm starting to realize um, doing this writing and doing my gratitudes and things that I got what I needed and it wasn't necessarily what everyone else needed because my needs are different and my interests and likes and dislikes are different. Um, I just didn't get what I wanted. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean that I wasn't okay. And the epiphany that I was having the other day, um, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but it was more or less that uh, my biological mom who couldn't necessarily take care of me or herself or whatever because of all the trauma that she had too, um, that maybe it was really a compliment that she was telling me that I was the good kid and she didn't have to worry about me. I mean, I internalized it as she didn't have to worry about me, which meant she didn't care about me, which meant she didn't love me. So that was my negative interpretation. Not that she ever said any of those things. That's just how I felt. That's how I interpreted it. But I realized um the other day as i was thinking about this um so i'm always looking ahead at my chapters to try to figure out what i have to deal with their face but i kind of realized that um maybe she said that i was the good kid because she knew that i was good or because i was doing things well enough that i didn't i didn't need the extra attention i wanted the extra attention but apparently i was doing okay on my own i just wish that maybe she would have spend a little bit more time praising me or telling me that it's like, oh, you're doing a really good job at this. You're doing a really good job of this. You know, just give me a list of something. Tell me I'm good enough at something. But instead it was just like, you're the good kid. I'm like, I'm the good kid. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Um, so I just, I guess a lot of times I felt like people were protecting me because I was too good or something. And I just, you know, and so when people would tell me that I was really good or exude good or do things like that, I was like, I don't want to be good anymore, especially like after my divorce, because I'm like, I did everything I was supposed to do. I did all the good things and it still didn't work out for me. So I'm done being good, except that I just felt too guilty doing things I'm not supposed to be doing. And I, you know, beat myself up for all the things that I don't think are perfect or good enough anyway. So I just can't run out and do um bad things. I just feel too guilty. Not that I'm, not that I'm perfect because I'm not perfect. You know, I always, those little white lies. I always make excuses for stuff. I always avoid doing things. I'm very lazy. <laughs> I can make a whole list of things that are wrong with me, but I'm trying to learn how to see the things that are right with me and the things that I'm doing well. And as I work on those things and then I can find something, I'm like, okay, there's something I need to change. And I can just work on one thing at a time because I can't just do a complete overhaul and change who I am overnight. And I don't need to change who I am at my core. I just need to figure out who I am. And I need to figure out what's really good for me in my life and what's not and how to take better care of my body 
and do good things for myself um, instead of putting everyone and everything else in front of myself. And I'm still struggling to figure out how to find a balance. <laughs> I suck at finding balances. And I'm, you know, not a very clean person. Um, I just am not very organized. I wish I was a little bit more organized. I'm kind of scatterbrained and all over the place, which I'm sure you guys can tell from watching my videos. But um, I guess my, my point was the realization that because I was the good kid, that meant I was doing things right. I was doing things well enough that my mom didn't feel like she needed to, to worry about me or like, you know, of all the kids that she had, she at least got one right. And that was me, you know? Um, and I don't know if that's what she meant by that, but I had that kind of thought that I'm like, oh, I was the one she got right, except that I was the one. So I'm like, so I was just kind of left to my own devices because I was, I was doing okay. I wasn't totally screwing up my life from her perspective. Um, whereas everyone else in my family was, I don't know. I, mean, I really don't know. Um, I think we're all a little bit screwed up. Um, and I'm pretty sure she was too. And I know she did the best that she could. And I'm grateful that I can write this book and have more compassion for her and the experiences in my life as I get older, help me to have more compassion. And, and, you know, the funny thing is, is when I was in high school, I used to think that my mom was my best friend, but I couldn't get her, you know, all the times I was trying to get her attention and trying to get her to talk to me and, you know, thinking she was that. And then as I got older and and moved away that I'm like, okay, I need to, I need space. I need to figure out who I am separate from my mom. And then she wouldn't give me the space. And then I ended up not talking to her for a while, which really, I'm sure it really hurt her feelings, but she wouldn't respect my boundaries. She wouldn't listen to me. And then when we did start talking after that, she was much more respectful of my boundaries. And when I would say stop or no, she listened because she knew at that point that I was serious and I would stop talking to her if she didn't respect my boundaries. So um, we were just starting to build that relationship um, or rebuild that relationship differently than it had been before um, when she passed away. And, you know, lots of things have happened to me since then. And uh, sometimes I wish I could still talk to her and apologize, you know, for cutting her out of my life temporarily or try to explain to her why I did what I did or tell her that I appreciate her because I now understand the struggle that she went through um, because of the things that have happened to me. But I, I couldn't understand them when I was a teenager. I couldn't understand them when I was going through those things. And so I think that's another reason why this chapter, this book, all of this is, is hard for me. It just brings up brings up things I don't want to think about. I don't want to face. <laughs> and even though I know, like my bishop was telling me, it's good to feel my emotions. I need to feel them. I need to process them. I need to take them to the Lord. And it's okay. Um, I still don't like to. <laughs> I'm very stubborn. And um, I've just trained myself most of my life that it's not okay to cry. And <clears throat> that I can't, you know, be upset and all of those things. And even though I know it's not true, it's just the process of internalizing it and allowing myself to grieve and allowing myself to have those feelings and, um, and knowing it's okay. And sometimes I think I have to get to the point where they just boil over and I can't control it anymore because it's the only way I will face them. And now I'm at this point in my life where I'm trying to work through them and I'm writing a book that is forcing me to, to um, relive those emotions as I write it, to view my life differently, to see God's hand in my life, to see how things have changed, how my perspective has changed, how my thought process from then and now has changed and the blessings that I have gained and learned from that or the realization that I didn't maybe um, had more than I realized I had um, or wasn't as left out or ignored or invisible as I thought I was or all of those things. It was just um, my misperceptions, my perspective, my view of life and my inability to express my view or my mom's inability to accept 
another view besides hers because maybe she just wasn't in a position to do that. Or maybe she genuinely thought that I understood. And I'm like, I don't know how many times we're going to have this conversation. Doesn't make sense to me. But, um, and maybe she just needed me to understand because she wasn't in a position to do any more than that. So, which now, you know, 20, 30 years later, I understand, but, um, I didn't then. So it's, um, but I mean, that's why they say hindsight is twenty twenty because we understand things better after we've lived through it, after we've gone through it. And a lot of times when we're in the middle of things, we don't understand what's going on. We don't understand why it's happening. And that's why we need the savior. That's why we need, um, we need God in our lives to just be like, okay, please give me some peace. Give me some direction help me through this. Cause I have no idea where I'm going. I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea why I'm going through this. And then, you know, just, trusting God to help us out the other side and then we get out the other side and we can look back and like, oh, now that makes sense. Oh, okay. Thank you, God, for helping me through that. Okay. Now I'm a better person. I'm a stronger person. Now I know I can survive this or that or whatever it is. And so it's, it's a gift. It's a blessing. But there's a lot of things in our lives we have to go through that we don't understand at the time we're going through it. And, um, and sometimes we don't see the blessings that we have in the midst of the trials. And as I'm going through this book and writing about it, I'm able to see the blessings that I had in the midst of the trials. I'm able to see a different viewpoint, a different perspective, um, to see my life a little bit more clearly, um, to see my value a little bit more clearly. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for the changed perspective. Um, but it also makes me realize um, that when I was so caught up in myself or focusing on what I thought I was missing out on or what everyone else had and being jealous and bitter because life wasn't fair, <laughs> that I wasn't necessarily nice to other people. I wasn't necessarily aware of what was going on with anyone else because I was focused on what was going on with me. So I didn't have compassion for anyone else. I was very... Um, close-minded, short-sighted, all of those things. And I, I mean, I didn't really know better and that's the environment I grew up in. So I can't beat myself up over it, but I can start to try to be more open-minded and compassionate now. And I can start by being compassionate with who I was and try to mend relationships with siblings, family that's still around. And I can, you know, just move forward and try to be different with people that I know now and people that I may meet in the future. Um, but it's, it's good to see those different things and to realize, you know, that, <laughs> um, I know I wasn't perfect. Um, but I guess it's just good to see the difference to realize, um, I guess that I could have been better or that I can be better, that I can do better. Um, and just to be aware, I think right now I'm just much more aware of God in my life and much more aware of the choices that I'm making, the consequences of my choices. It doesn't mean that I'm changing my choices or changing my actions. And some of them probably still aren't the best choices for actions, like putting off my writing and staying up when I'm really tired. They're not the best choices I could be making because it's not helping me get caught up on my sleep. It's not helping me process my emotions, but I'm aware of my choices. I'm aware that I have the choices, which um, at some point in my life, I didn't feel like I was. I felt like my emotions just kind of controlled me. If I was depressed or discouraged and there was something wrong with me, um, I don't feel those things anymore. I'm also a little bit more aware of how my choices and my actions can affect other people. And again, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm changing them. Um, I think it kind of goes back to that um, 12 step stuff that I learned of awareness, acceptance, action. So I'm like, I'm aware of the choices I'm making. I'm aware that I have choices. I'm starting to try to accept, <laughs> accept those. Um, but it's, it's a process and I am a work in progress and I still struggle to get myself to do the things that I know are good for me 
and that would be beneficial for me. I'm still struggling to get through this book, which, you know, should be easy if I would just trust God to, to help me through it and just let myself feel my emotions, just grab a box of Kleenex and sit down on my laptop and just have at it. And I can do that. I, I did it the first time I wrote it. Um, but this time I'm trying to be making sure that it goes in an order, which I can still do that and I can still cry and I can still get through it. I just, I'm like, I'm torn between I want to because I want to be done with the book and I want to be done with all of it. But I'm kind of at that point once again or commonly where I just want to skip the process where I'm like, I just want it to be done. I just don't want to have to go write it. I just want it to like, you know, open my laptop and look, it's all done and I can send it off to people and I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to feel it. I just want to jump to however many days in the future it takes to get my book there instead of having to torture myself with it. Or I want to put it on the back burner and just be like, I'll do it later and work on a different book because that's, you know, what I do. I start different books. I start different stories to avoid the one that needs to be written. And, um, but I've made this commitment and I've made the choice to try to face my emotions and face that. And so I think sometimes it's like, okay, I know that's the one I chose that I'm going to face and that's the one I'm going to work on and I don't want to do it. So then I end up not doing other things either. Um, so, but like I said, I did, I did read about half the chapter. I did make a few changes. And then when I realized I have to like rearrange the entire order of the chapter, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that at 3.30 in the morning. I'm good. Um, and then of course I do these videos and I'm grateful for the opportunity to do the videos because it helps me to, again, put things in a different perspective because I'm always saying a prayer, starting a prayer when I do these videos and praying that God will help me know what to say, what to see, what to share. And then stuff comes out and then I hear like the answers and the struggles and the things that I need to do. And it's like, oh, okay, I'll work on that tomorrow. <laughs> but I'm grateful for the things that I'm learning and for the things that I'm seeing, the change perspective and, um, and knowing that I have to remind myself that it's okay to have emotions. It's okay to cry. It's okay to, if things aren't working in my story, to change it, to put it in a different order or just to take it out if it doesn't fit with whatever's going on. Um, I've moved a whole bunch of stuff to the end. I don't even know if I'm going to use it. I'm like, this is good, but it doesn't go here. So to the end, this is good, but it doesn't go here. So to the end, <laughs> and when I get to the end, I'm going to decide if I'm going to use all that stuff or I'm going to, if I'm going to end up deleting all of it. Um, cause I keep thinking, Oh, it'll go somewhere else. It'll go somewhere else. And maybe it'll end up just being other sections entirely by themselves. Um, at the end, which will make my book longer than I want it to be, but it will just be whatever length it needs to be. And I just need to trust that God will help me figure out what that is. And I don't know what that is right now. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of done. I'm out of things to say. Um, if you like, you can hit like, subscribe, share with someone else if you think it will help them. And um, just remember that with God, there's always a way up. There's always hope. There's always a way out. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not a train. Um, and I hope you have a great day full of gratitude and maybe some writing.